Okay, so we're back. Real quick. This is not... This is one of my... Uh, not my safe core companies. This is one of my companies where I'm just like, I think it'll eventually turn around. Um, and the company is Alexander Forbes. Um, they, they're a financing company. Um, I believe they deal with uh, retirement annuities, investing people's money, uh, kind of like Sunlam, but like a very small version. Um, and I think they deal with other stuff as well. So they, they manage people's money. They, so they've got retirement annuities, they've got asset management, uh, they've got a number of, of things in there. Um, so um, it's a respectable company for those that know it. I didn't know it for a long time. I think I didn't know it up until uh, I was a student at the varsity. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's only when I, I was doing my, not sure what year I was doing at varsity that I heard about it. And that's because a friend was working there. And I, I just looked at my my uh, mom's reaction when she heard that a friend of mine was, was working there. And yeah. So that's just a short story as to how I learned about Alexander Forbes. Then I followed up a little bit on it, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's not not geniusly run. So it's not like the person who's running it is a genius. I don't know who's running it. Uh, again, I just think it's a company that just got hit because they deal with asset management, retirement annuity. They basically looking at long term. Um, people's long-term money when the pandemic hits and people no longer had money they couldn't make an income so they couldn't make money off the retirement annuity because no one had retired of anything that to stop in the retirement annuity because people lost their jobs then they had to pay out retirement in your uh, partial monies uh, because you lost your job and therefore you can't be charging me for retirement annuity when i've lost my job so I think that was really, really bad. Now, the reason that I think that it'll turn is, again, a, uh, government at the end, as screwed up as they are, I believe has to try and collect taxes. And the only way to collect taxes is you think, one of the ways to collect taxes is essentially from employees and companies. Now, Logically, if, company, if government was logical and fair, the idea would be, let's try and get as many people working so we can tax, right? Um, but, you know, it's government's government. They, they, they will. But the point, though, is they, there's going to be employment opportunities that open up, which are opening up slowly, but as they grow and, and things improve, it's so let's hope the third wave doesn't really kick in that much here. That's going to allow people to then get jobs. Um, I think the other upside, which I didn't mention about Sunlam and so on, I think the other upside is um, for certain companies is they will they will build incentives, incentives like your permanent, right? It's at this point that I think with certain jobs people were able to be a bit more secure and understand the idea behind permanence. And if it's contract, you just, ah, you know, it's a contract, I'm, I'm good. But permanence gave you that, that concept of, you're not gonna fire me or you're not going to cut me out because of this pandemic, if you're permanent. Um, we might have to cut salaries or some sacrifice might be there, but I'm not going to lose my job. Whereas if you're in a contract, you know, um, if your contract ended in December, you're, no one is obligated to, to, to get you back. So the concept of permanence became important. So if permanent becomes a benefit and within the benefits you've got, Things like um, you've got a pension, which Alexander Forbes covers. You've got a retirement annuity, which I believe Alexander Forbes covers. Um, that's that's an upside. Um, There's a few others. But the other thing is, you've probably never seen an advert from Alexander Forbes. They deal with companies. So they don't have to advertise to people. So 
remember with a company when you're getting a, a, a retirement so no retirement a pension fund or a provident fund they still have provident funds they don't they you don't do it yourself they work with that company so the minute you get into the company you get covered under the provident to the pension fund so if alexander forbes decides that all people who are permanent um or go or from gain every person from gain who is permanent will have alexander forbes as their pension so that's kind of where alexander kind of jumps in now if people lose their jobs, then Alexander's got a problem. So if you're looking at permanency, then the idea comes in and works. Now, when now where am I going with this? When employment comes back in, people and I, you can't quote me on this, but my view is people are going to be a bit more excited if a job says permanent because it's going to give them safety, especially after a pandemic. So if someone says it's a permanent post, a permanent position, a person's going to jump at that opportunity indirectly in fear of what's currently happened. And that's where Alexander Forbes, I believe, will have a slight advantage because if they're with that company, then a lot more people are going to fight for quote and unquote permanent positions, which in turn helps out Alexander Forbes, if that makes sense. So I think that there's going to be a turn. Um, I think the EPS um, next end of this year, if there's no pandemic, um, if there's no third wave, I think the EPS will be positive. Personally, I think the EPS will be positive at the end of this year, assuming there's no third wave. Um, I don't know when the earnings date will be, the next earnings date it should be this year. Um, they may, they may, they may, because I haven't cut dividends, they may continue with dividends. I think the EPS is really going to be positive um, for the ex dividend dates, right? So that's the other. Um, I think we already, I already received um, dividends from Alexander Forbes. But yeah, um, and the hope is it gets back to about 10 rand a share if that happens, that's 100%. Um, plus, um, plus six point two percent. If it continues to, I bought it around the threes. If it continues to down to around the threes and fours, that's fine. I'm accumulating. If in the next five years it jumps to about ten, eventually, you know, um, uh, based on the current figures, I would have about a dividend of about twelve percent, ten, ten plus percent. So you know, you're looking at. Your Sunlam's at nine. Your Alexander Forbes is at ten to twelve percent. Your Old Mutual, we're looking at about fourteen percent, um, assuming that everything remains the same and it goes up to a seven percent dividend yield, and they don't increase the dividends themselves. We're looking at an average on my core stocks of about ten plus percent, right? Um, which is first already beating what the banks offer by quite a bit. Um, two. There's grow. They also grow stock. Go um. They also grow in stocks. So, um, double divi double digits dividend growth um sounds amazing, right? Um, and it's going to snowball, um, within each stock. So that that's going to sound amazing, obviously. Um, again, um, there is no way that this is a guarantee, but this is one of those stocks where I'm just like, you know what? I really like it. Um, I'm hoping that. It eventually finds its way back to about ten rand a share. I'm hoping that the dividend at that time doubles, you know, um, or remains at about six point two percent at that point, right? So we're looking at easily doubling. We're looking at about what's fifty fifty two cents a share, roughly, um, sixty cents a share, perhaps, at that point, um. At about six percent dividend yield, so by my calculation, I'd be at about twelve percent dividend yield. So that's that's my thinking there. Um, quickly here, I didn't realize it's been ten minutes. I've been rambling. Um, just to be quick, the only real negatives are just that the profit margins are at a negative, but the operating margins are well. 
So that's a good thing. Uh, profit margins during a pandemic or negatives, I think that profit margins would will either be at a smaller negative at the end of this year, assuming there's no pandemic, or um, there'll be a positive. I think the return on equity might not be a positive, but will be a slower and smaller negative. Um, the revenue, I believe, would grow this year. With our, it's just started on level one. Um, the other thing is we are right now entering a new financial year of money company. So I really think that at the end of this year, um, the revenue, again, assuming we remain where we are, I think we could beat four billion in revenue. I think we could beat the three point one five billion in gross profit. I think that we can approach a nine hundred and eight fifty nine hundred um, EBITDA. Um, and I think that our net income can drop below 900 million. And if that happens, um, that's going to be a good sign because what that then says is, you know, if, if there's no third wave and it drops below the 900, next year, I, I, I don't doubt seeing, I could see a 500 million loss. Um, maybe even positive, but let's just say a 500 million loss. The following, I think in about three years, I can see it being uh, uh profitable right um which is great um <clears throat> and then in terms of the balance sheets 200 almost 3 billion in cash and think again in about two to three years we will have beaten 3 billion in cash um assuming things don't really go south um the debt is under 800 million which is just like a quarter of it um, if I'm not mistaken, um, yeah, a quarter, almost a third, like a third of us, um, yeah, that's the debt, um, and they've got, and they've got the the debt is is, is essentially so small that the 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 ca the free cash flow they have is almost enough to cover the total debt, so they're not in debt. The operating cash flow, I think, again. End of this year might be at say negative one point five, maybe below that. Um, that would be nice. And I think in about a year or two, you know, we're we're even if this remains a negative and slowly changes, I think over time we'd we'd make quite a bit. So again, that's the thinking. There's a lot that I'm missing out. I'm trying to avoid making this like a twenty minute video. So yeah, this uh, if you're wondering why I don't look at this, this is for trading stocks right I, well, I don't trade stocks so if y'all like trading stocks y'all can look at the side right here right and just focus on the stuff the share price history and all that so yeah anyway this is why um i'm getting into alexander forbes at a very basic level but this is not like a core stock that i'm 100 percent behind in terms of believing in this is just a stock where i'm just like i'm gonna put a lot of money into it and i'm gonna risk a lot with it and if if it works out, it's gonna pay off. Um, obviously, it's not gonna pay off as much as the others, but you know, um, it's gonna pay off a, a double a, a double digit dividend. So I'm happy with that. Anyways, thanks for sitting with me for about fifteen minutes. Please do click the subscribe button, thumbs up, share the video, and let's get people to learn to invest and become smarter and more financially independent. Thank you very much. Please do subscribe, click the thumbs up button, and share the video. Cheers.